So for today's video, we're going to be talking about resistive testing. Now, when we're in the upper extremity, resistive testing can manifest in three unique ways. First, we can look at it in terms of resistive isometrics, which are helpful for determining or differentiating between a contractile versus a non-contractile pathology or lesion. Second, we can use it to look at the integrity of the neurologic or neuromusculoskeletal system, specifically in terms of myotomes. And so we can use that to look at a specific myotomal level or nerve root level. Finally, the third way we can use resistive testing is in terms of manual muscle testing, and specifically using it with an isometric or make test. So let's go ahead and get started and illustrate each one of these, as well as the nuances or differences that exist between each of them. So we're gonna begin with shoulder adduction. Now with shoulder adduction, we first would make sure that the individual has full active range of motion, um, and so we would screen that to begin with. Uh, that would tell us that they're able to use that volitionally. And by definition, if we're thinking of, of uh, contractile pathologies or manual muscle testing, if, uh, say for example, this individual can take their arm all the way up over the top of their head and come back down, we know that they're already moving against gravity and we know that they're already engaging those muscles. So that automatically tells us that they have at minimum a three out of five if we're grading it from a manual muscle testing standpoint. It also lets us know that contractually, uh, they're able to engage those muscles, okay? So how might we then apply each one of these different resistive tests in this case? Well, the first one we're gonna look at is resistive isometrics. Resistive isometrics are done to determine whether or not a contractile pathology is there. And so in this case, we're going to use two fingers. Do you have to use two fingers? We'll talk about that in just a second. But we're gonna take two fingers, we're not gonna cross the joint line, and we're going to press down. And then we're gonna have our patient relax. Now, with resistive isometric testing, there are four options that present themselves. There can be no pain whatsoever, there can be pain associated with this, and that could tell us that there's just pain but not really any pathology. There could be pain and pathology, that's our third option, or the fourth option goes back to no pain, but there's no pain because we've completely lost the function of the neuromuscular unit. So bookends, no pain, no pain at this side is, everything's in good repair, bookend on this side, no pain, things are really compromised. And then you have pain in the middle, whether or not we're at a grade one, two, or three, all right? So with that resistive isometric, we need to ask our patient, was there pain associated with it? And if there was pain associated with it, it helps us to narrow or funnel towards a contractile pathology. Not entirely, meaning we can't say it with 100%, but it at least starts to move us in that direction. The kicker here though with a resistive isometric is we're not using it to grade strength. Meaning, I don't finish that and say that individual now has a three or a four or a five out of five. It's the intention behind the test. The intention behind a resistive isometric is to tell us whether or not a contractile structure is involved or a non-contractile structure is involved. The second test then is a myotome test. Myotomes look at a myotomal distribution really originating with a nerve root level. And myotomes specifically answer the question of, is there fatigable weakness that is present? So if we're using our, our uh, example from earlier with shoulder reduction, in this case, we'd have our patient come back up. We've already assessed and screened shoulder reduction. They have it. But now we want to know, what about the integrity of the neuromuscular system? Now for this, since we're not using it again to assess strength, it doesn't matter if we cross the joint line. And so we can come here and we can say, just meet my resistance. Hold. And we're going to count to five. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, test is over. Now the difference here is with resistive isometrics and manual muscle tests, are typically performed for two to three seconds at most. In contrast, a myotone test is performed for five seconds. It is an isometric contraction, meaning we're not providing or applying any more resistance than what our patient can meet. 
So they kind of essentially cancel each other out. They're equivalent. But the reason we use five seconds is to assess for fatigable weakness, meaning does the patient slowly fatigue or give over time? What that might look like is as we're pressing, the patient slowly begins to give, right? That would let us know that the integrity of the neurologic structures that are innervating those muscles, in particular, we'd be looking at the deltoid here, that something is wrong. And so that would clue us in that we need to do further investigation uh, into not only the deltoid, maybe there's a contractile pathology there, but maybe there's a neurologic pathology. And so we would need to look more closely to C4 and C5 to ensure that there's not something from a root level that is creating this fatigable weakness downstream. Again, five second hold. The intention here is not to grade or to uh, substantiate with objective uh, numbers the strength, but to answer the question, is the neurologic tissue of, of intactness and does it have integrity? The third option then is manual muscle testing. Now manual muscle testing, while it would appear to be an objective measure, is actually subjective. There is a fair amount of intra and inter reliability issues that come about with manual muscle testing based on size, the anthropometrics of the clinician and your set. When we're talking about isometric testing or resistive testing here, we're specifically looking at grades three through four. To achieve a grade five, grade five becomes a break test, which means you are hoping to exceed the amount of strength that the individual has or maximal strength. Now, for some individuals, that may still be an isometric, but we, we typically think of that as actually breaking the individual. And I'll demonstrate kind of the, the difference between these two. So again, if we're looking at the deltoid, maybe even a little bit of supraspinatus with uh, shoulder abduction, here's what a manual muscle test now might look like. The individual comes up, we're careful not to cross multiple joints, so we're proximal to the elbow joint. We're now careful with line of force because we wanna see how much they have. And we tell them, give us everything you have and then we maybe even provide a little bit of stabilization so that they're not leaning or tilting through the trunk to get extra help. And so now line of force enters the equation. We say, give us everything you got. Go, 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 go. And that would be a four out of five. Now, a five out of five in contrast might look like this. We allow the individual to come back up. Give me everything you got. Go, 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 go. And you can see at that point, uh, shoulder abduction begins to give. We begin to move back into an abducted posture, which means that we're now executing a break test. My strength is in excess of this individual strength. We're now eliciting not an isometric contraction, but an eccentric contraction. I would encourage you to look at the supplementary uh, resources and, and PDF guide that will be posted as well for this, comparing and contrasting the three uh, resistive tests, resistive isometrics, myotomes, and manual muscle tests. Have a go with a peer or colleague and let me know if there's any questions.